After making a video on my top eight reference type plugins, I received a bunch of questions about this free plugin called Span. Span is an audio spectrum analyzer that I've been working with for like years and it's 100% free. So I decided to make this video, show you around Span, how I configure it and work with it in my mixing and mastering sessions. So let's do it. Now, the first thing to do is to go on the Voxango website, which is the company that makes Span. Again, it's 100% free. I'm gonna leave the link down below, download it, install it. And this is exactly how it's gonna look like when you're gonna first open it. Now, on my side, I have it inserted in the insert section of the control room so I can analyze my full mix. And the cool thing is that even if I need to analyze a single channel using Span, I can only solo that channel. And since Span is inserted in the control room, it's gonna analyze that track since it's in solo. So I kinda like it to have it there, so I only have to use one instance of span in my mix session. Okay, now the way it looks like right now is okay, you know, but it gives me a lot of detail and I wanna smooth that up because I don't need that many detail uh, when I'm analyzing a full mix. Uh, the goal with a plugin like Span, like for me anyways, is to um, show me the average tone of a song, a mix, or a track, okay? Kind of a general trend of the sound. And the way it is set up right now, this is not what I'm getting. So I'm gonna fix that up by clicking uh, on this setting icon, and that will give me access to a bunch of different settings. So I'm first gonna fix the smooth that is off right now. So I'm gonna smooth that up a bit so it's less edgy. And uh, let me check here if I bring that to one octave. Okay, now I smooth it the full reading like way too much. Let's go in between at a third of an octave. Okay, now I get a bit more detail, but it's still pretty smooth. I'm gonna keep it this way. The second thing I'm gonna do here is to, uh, first of all, fix up that color. I kinda don't like this tone of green. So let me just go right here on top, on the top left, click on this colored rectangle, and I'm gonna have a choice of several different colors. I'm gonna bring, uh, this tone of green instead, which looks way better. All right, so then what I'm gonna do here is uh, the average time. I'm gonna fix that up, okay? Because now, right now, it's reacting a lot to the transients. If I bring the average time even lower, you will see it's gonna go nuts. Look at that going, that's crazy. So it actually reacts to all transients of that song, you know, it's crazy. So I'm gonna smooth that up, bring the average time higher somewhere at around 4,000, I guess. And you know, there you go. So now it reacts to the general tone of the sound, which is exactly what I'm looking for. Now I get the general trend of what I'm listening to. Next, I'm gonna go right at the bottom here and fix the uh, freck low and freck high. Because right now I have like the range between 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz. I wanna enlarge that range a bit more, okay? I'm gonna to explain to you why in a moment. So I'm gonna bring that down. So now I have like the full low end frequency spectrum that I can actually see, okay? And that is important for me anyways, because below 10 hertz, 20 hertz, usually humans are gonna have a hard time to hear those super low end frequencies. So by working with a tool like A, spectrum analyzer like span that is actually going to help a lot you know just in case i end up having a kind of a build up somehow while mixing in those super low end frequencies that i have a hard time hearing you know if i see them i can actually work on reducing that build up you know or else it might hunt me down later on throughout the mix by reducing my dynamic range so checking out the low end is actually a very good use of a spectrum analyzer, especially if you don't have the room or the speakers or the hearing capabilities to hear that low. Then uh, I'm gonna do the same for frequency high. Okay, so I'm gonna extend that to 24K, which is half of the amount of sample rate that my session is set up to, which is 48 kilohertz. Okay, range, I'm not gonna touch it, range low and range high. So that's basically the dynamic range that I can set up. So I'm gonna keep it to the default value. So that, that is for the low and that is for the highs. Okay, so 
again. I don't need to touch this for now. Uh, slope, I'm gonna leave it at its default value, which is 4.5, which is actually the way humans are gonna hear a flat frequency response, basically. But you can play around with it if you want to, but you know, for a kind of a more general human type of hearing, 4.5 is gonna work well. Then I have the block size that I can play around with for the resolution. So I can bring that down to 64. And as you can see, I don't have lots of resolution at this block size. So I usually keep it between 4096 to 8192 to get good resolution. Now I have the field display active. If I deactivate it, this is what the graphic analyzer is gonna look like. So I'm gonna keep it on. There's other very cool features that we have access to with this free <laughs> spectrum analyzer. Uh, first of all, if I want to uh, monitor in MS mode, I can, because right now it's set up to stereo, okay? But it, let's say uh, I go under presets, I have like several other presets that I can load. Uh, one is uh, stereo mastering. So if I double click on stereo mastering, this is what it's gonna look like. Uh, if I go back and let's go with mid-side stereo, there you go. All right, so let's fix that up a bit. Okay, so now I have uh, my center and I have my sides that is at the bottom. So right on top, uh, right now mid is selected. So that means that the mid section of the stereo spectrum is the one that is up front. If I click, I'm gonna get to the side. Now the side is gonna be the, the, the reading that is up front right now. The underlay, uh, I'll be able to choose mid and add it as a underlay so I can visually see it on top of the, uh, the sides. And I can go from one to the other and customize also some parameters. So let's say for the sides, I wanna remove the field display. There you go. Now the sides is only that line without being filled up with hard colors. So that can be a way to work. Uh, let's say I want to smooth up the average time. of only the sides, I can do so. If I want to do the same for the mids, I'm going to select mid and let's go. Let's go with uh, super reactive <laughs> so you can see the difference between the two. So this is how you can work that up. I can change the color also. Let's bring this one to this color and the side to red. And there you go. And I can, you know, on top of that, let's add a bit of smoothness on both sides and mids. So this way I can compare the frequency spectrum of the center signal compared to the sides. Okay, so that can be actually useful also. Now a cool thing that can be done also with span is to solo bands of frequencies. Check this out. I'm gonna keep my finger on command on Mac or control on uh, Windows. And by clicking on my mouse on top of that, I'll be able to solo this band of frequencies, which is great. Okay, I can also wide up the range or narrow down the range with the mouse wheel. Well, that is actually very, very cool. And something else I can do is if you look on the top left, I see exactly the frequency value of where my mouse is pointing at. That is actually very nice. And on top of that, I also have the note value. And if let's say I want to note down this frequency, let's say I have like a, I have a buildup at 200 Hertz. I can actually point that out into the spectrum analyzer, right click, and that will copy that value in the clipboard and from this point I'll be able to open an EQ and copy that exact frequency inside my EQ you know and increase or decrease uh, the gain to fix the problem I have you know I can even zoom on a specific region by keeping my finger on option or alt and dragging and there you go now I zoomed in on a specific band of frequencies and I can do you know the solo thing from this point if I want to. To get out of this window, keep your finger on Alt or Option and double click, and there you go, you're back to its original state. Now, the way I work with a plugin like Span is not to look at uh, the analysis and try to 
find problems, you know, it's the other way around. I listen, and then if I find some problems, I can use a spectrum analyzer to point me out to the exact location of that problem and fix stuff up. So let's say I'm actually hearing some buildup in the high mids on a mix, you know, I can jump on my spectral analyzer, check where the buildup is, target that region and figure out where the problem is coming from. It could actually be an electric guitar that is actually creating that high mid buildup. And from this point, I can zero in and fix the problem. So listen first and use a plugin like Span to analyze and lead you to where the problem is and fix it from this point. I also like to use a plugin like Span uh, to work with reference mixes to compare my mix with the reference I'm working with, make sure I'm in the same ballpark, check out the general trend, general tone of the reference compared to my mix, and not necessarily to compare the differences and try to fix that up in my mix, not at all, you know, just to make sure I'm in the same ballpark. And of course, there's gonna be differences. And that's okay, because even if you compare different reference mixes together, you know, by using a spectrum analyzer, you will notice that they will look a bit different from each other. And that's okay, you know, that's part of the process. And especially if you compare different styles of music, like analyzing how an EDM song sounds like compared to a country song. Or a rock song compared to a pop song. Or a jazz song compared to a folk song, you know? It's actually interesting to actually analyze the frequency spectrum of those different styles of music, you know? So working with a plugin like Span can actually be a very good learning tool. And you know, if you have like, let's say a vocal that has lots of sibilance going on and you want to know the exact frequency of the problem, I can actually solo that vocal track, open Span and Span will show me exactly where the problem is. And I can zero in on this range and fix that up with my DSer. So a spectrum analyzer can be very useful when mixing and mastering. And the trick is always to listen first, evaluate on your own, and then use the help of a spectrum analyzer when you already identified a problem and then fix it. Now there's other spectrum analyzers out there actually even in your own DAW. So for example, if I open my channel settings window, uh, for this channel, you see right away, you have a spectrum analyzer <laughs> within that window. Same for some EQ plugins like Frequency, for example, part of Cubase, it will give you a spectrum analyzer. The Fab Filter also has a spectrum analyzer going on. So lots of plugins will give you a visual of the frequency spectrum. Plugin like Span is gonna give you way more options when it comes to the uh, graphic side of the spectrum analyzer and there's so many plugins out there that will do that job and there's actually another one that just came out if i'm not mistaken and it's my good friend tokyo spears that told me about this one and it's by tdr it's called prism so you know i just installed it never tried it before it's actually my first time opening the plugin looks pretty cool so let me know if you want me to do a video on this one so let me know on your side what is your favorite spectrum graphic analyzer that you like to work with is it span is it something else list me everything down below on top of your comments and questions until next time take care and see you